I'm at a gypsy. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna start this thing, boys. We're gonna uh, gonna kick off this quarterly review collab. Normally, they're just doing like the the iPhone on the YouTube. We thought we'd step it up this year. Get you in the studio, Giz. I've been trying to drag you in in this studio for a while, mate. Turns out the only way I can get you in here is when the team makes you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. stoked, stoked to finally um, have you in. Be here and check it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, old Feeney's been in here before, so if anyone uh, if anyone wants to listen to B Feen's episode of Gypsy Tales, it's up there. Uh, was it was a bit of a cracker? What was that right before? When was that? Was it before your debut or had you done a it race It was the yet? week after, just after the first round last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you'd done one race, yeah. You're watching all the replays. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, because Tassie was crazy, eh? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was cool. It was cool. And then goes on, Which, gets his race To be honest, we just spoke about Supercross for most of it. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. Well, that's what I kept saying to Giz. I was like, mate, just come and do the podcast and talk about Supercross. You're a full full two-wheel nerd. Like, we just don't even have to talk about racing. It's been good to watch this year, too. Yeah, it's yeah. cool, hey? Dude, it actually, it, I feel like it's been one, maybe one of the best seasons ever. Yeah, different people every week in the 450s and... You see, like momentum swings and stuff. It's been good to watch, and yeah. so unpredictable. So it makes it entertaining, I guess, right? Mm, yeah, no, it's cool. The, uh, One guessing anyway. every week who's gonna win. It's hard now. We're back racing. It's sort of on our race days, so we're yeah, trying to tune in and watch in between sessions and that. Man, I was heartbroken for Plessinger. The su- hardcore supercross supercars fans probably won't know, but well, one of the coolest guys in the sport this last weekend led every single lap almost had his first ever 450 race win just stitched up last lap cartwheel i was so gutted yeah. for him eh? gutted yeah very good but oh well hey uh right oh so let, let's uh let's get into this it's uh it's been a obviously a, a pretty wild kickoff to the season for you guys um but i feel like with every season start that you see there's uh there's a big off season that goes into it so that is from like the team perspective and then from you guys personally so i don't know maybe we'll start with uh with you giz how was the off season mate i know that you like to basically drive anything that has wheels and a motor whether it's two or four so uh yeah give us give us a bit of a rundown of the off season yeah so it was good this year i could go back to new zealand the year before i couldn't so i had to stay in australia so yeah this time went back got back on the dirt bike and then started racing some sprint cars so it was epic i stayed there almost two months really and um, Sick. yeah it was there's a lot of rain which sucked we had a few races cancelled but yeah every week was doing something cool and um whether it was riding or racing something and yeah just had a good time like i missed being back there did our annual derby race with some friends in the paddock cars and stuff that went pretty good my car went bad but um yeah it was just just awesome fun and a good way to um unwind after a full-on year how um did you realize how much you missed home through the whole covid thing like because i mean to to spend the time away from your family i mean that it it has probably like a bigger impact than you think in the moment it's probably not until you actually go home where you're like dude i needed this bad yeah so like i love new zealand i'd live there if i could and um pre-covid i was pretty much whenever i had a week off i'd go back there now it's a lot more difficult um when covid covid happened um uh, i went straight back to new zealand like on the sunday of grand prix and i stuck there for those few months so yeah i I love home. I want to spend as much time there as possible. So the last couple of years have been pretty tough. So, um, yeah, hopefully can keep going back there. I'm trying to do rally again there um, this year. So hopefully keep racing over there. How is the uh, the moto scene over there this time? Because so for people listening, Giz actually rips on a moto, like legit. <laughs> no. So so last year, no, nah, you do. So last year, <laughs> last year. <laughs> Well, the team can cut it, whatever. Uh, but last year in the off season, we actually got to ride uh, a fair bit together. Yeah, we rode a bit. And the the week to week progression that you were making as soon as you jumped on the what you got a two fifty f in the end day. Eh? You didn't get the three fifty. In Oz, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It was probably good. My off my season 
started because I was getting a bit too quick for my liking. I think we were pretty similar speeds, so I was, uh, yeah, taking too much risk. So well, I dude, I honestly, now. <laughs> I honestly think that if we kept right, like every day that you rode, you were getting quicker. That I think that there was going to be a point in the very, <laughs> very near future where I was not going to yeah. be able to keep up with you. But you were right, like actually <laughs> good riding because there's people that can go fast and you wouldn't say they're a good rider, but like you're actually a good rider. So for the supercar fan, fans out there, Giz is actually, <laughs> he's, he's got some moves on, on two wheels too. Yeah. I just don't like the jumps. Yeah. Same bro. <laughs> We're both. Yeah. So what bike did you have in uh, NZ this time? Did you have the Yamaha that you so had I, last time? Yeah. So it's a 2010 Yamaha. So yeah. I just rode around on that old kickstart and, Still goes pretty good. Got it serviced by one of my mates and then we went riding all the time. So it went really good. And people might not know how good New Zealand is for two wheels. Like it's just one of, it's like a fairyland for dirt bikes. Yeah. Yeah, it's unreal. My tracks, I rode around there, but it's not that good anymore. Like I haven't really ridden it for 10 years or something since I used to race. Um, but yeah, everywhere, there's so many tracks within an hour. And when it rains, I just go 45 minutes an hour north to a sand track, which is open every day. So you could pretty much ride wherever you like there. It's it's epic. And of course, it's fun, but it's good off-season training too. Oh, definitely. And man, when I first went to New Zealand, I was actually blown away that like any random Saturday or Sunday, you stop at any servo and all you see is used with bikes on the back of it like way more yeah. than australia it's it actually yeah. blew me yeah, it's away everywhere yeah it's pretty cool that's for sure so then the the sprint car stuff that you got into how had you done much sprint car stuff before uh i've done like a couple of practice days like had a couple of goes in one but when i was a kid i used to race in the kids class um yeah 1997 98 i started in that um and dad used to be racing sprint cars then so yeah i tried to race a couple of years ago in a midget um but then rd saw a picture of me in the middle of a pile up after my first race and told me to stop um <laughs> so then yeah it's quite cool quite cool he let me well him and jamie let me um with a sprint car they're a bit bigger a bit safer with the wing and stuff like that so even though they're faster they're a bit safer and um yeah just they're the fastest accelerating thing i've ever driven like you got almost 900 horsepower i think mine had and i think i probably got full throttle genuinely like three times like wow it's ridiculous how fast they are yeah and the aero that they have like they just look like basic things and they feel like it too but when you're driving they're a proper race car it's pretty pretty awesome and i went from the back to the midfield and got some okay results but those top guys there um, they're unreal it, that must be like its own discipline i mean i'm sure like when you go from like va supercar to gt3 car to what you could kind of like move around yeah. and the skills would translate but i feel like yeah. sprint cars whole, that's just a whole different deal yeah it's a it's a whole different sport and there's only two corners two lefts and they call it four or whatever but um it's crazy how how different it is and how the track evolves like i had you do one race and you think okay i gotta do this next time you go out and the track's completely different like um yeah it's insane I've, it's been a long time since i've been lapped and uh, i got lapped oh, plenty of times that's it's pretty so, crazy that's so gnarly and you just would expect that you'd be able to do whatever in it you know you'd be like oh yeah, i'm shane van gisberg and i've won won some shit you <laughs> nah. know but to go into yeah. that and get laughed i mean that's no joke yeah oh, it's crazy <laughs> and and there's guys who are you know 18 and then there's guys who are in their 50s racing like it's um it's pretty awesome how the sport is and how friendly everyone is as well like it was it was really cool like you finish your racing and then have a beer or whatever in the pits and um the same as v8s dude it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <basically>. no, quite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could you no, see people talk to each other in speedway? Yeah, yeah. Could you see yourself yeah. doing like once V eight is all said and done, or like whatever pro racing? Could you see yourself just fully sinking into something like that and being like a fifty year old dude in New Zealand doing sprint cars? <laughs> I'll be racing something. I don't know what it is, but yeah, like that's a perfect sport for summer, and yeah, just a good way to have some fun but keep sharp as well. 
Yeah. And uh, so, Brock, what was your off-season like, mate? What you? What sort of mischief did you get up, up to on the Gold Coast? <laughs> None at all. None at all, mate. Um, it was quite funny, actually, because I got home. Got home like the Tuesday after Adelaide and I left on Friday to go over to Austria to go to the Athlete Performance Centre with Red Bull. So, um, yeah, it was the that was a pretty cool experience. I mean, Prince Jeffrey went over there and, and did some training and had a look around and met some people at Red Bull. So that sort of filled in the first couple of weeks. And after that, I tried to chill a bit and, and get refreshed for this year. And I suppose we did a bit of GT stuff at the start of the year, so kept busy but um certainly felt refreshed coming into the new year that's awesome how was the the austria experience because i mean it looks incredible over there like austria itself as a country is super beautiful but then from everything that i've heard about that red bull hq like that's just a mental place yeah it was nuts um just austria in general like i'd still be there happily right now you know what i mean and then going to the training place every day um yeah we rocked up and we landed on the plane it's like minus seven outside <laughs> and snowing and i'm like you got a jumper in a couple of parkings <laughs> a full Aussie um, spec. yeah i just rock out i got my Have you sneakers on. on i'm in like a foot of <laughs> a foot of snow i'm like oh no this isn't good but um man we had such a good time and and you know i hear a lot about the training center and and all the stuff but to actually experience it was unreal and I thought like I genuinely thought I wasn't going to like the training part I thought I'd you know after the season the last thing I sort of wanted to do was go and hit the gym straight away but we both had such a fun time and and they got to show us around I mean we went to ice hockey game uh hangar seven and red bull hq and all that sort of stuff met I mean world champions of different sports so it was so cool I mean you'd sit down at lunch on a table like this and you'd just be talking to other red bull athletes about what they do and and all the cool stuff so that was such a good experience yeah man no i bet that's like a not probably not like once in a lifetime but i'm sure that when you were there they would have felt like this was like a once in a lifetime experience kind of deal yeah for sure i mean as i said i'd, I'd still happily be there now like just experiencing the proper european winter i suppose and and it was nearly Christmas time, you know what I mean? It was a week before Christmas. So to sort of be there and experience that, um, you know, aside from all the cool stuff that we got to do with Red Bull was pretty awesome. So hopefully they'll have me back and hopefully I can go back again soon. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that, I'd say it's probably a pretty open door policy for you at this point. What, yeah. um, what, what did you like learn about, I guess, supercars? Cause last year, obviously like rookie full season, you probably had a bit of an idea in your head of like, okay, I actually know some stuff I need to get better at. So like, did you have anything in your mind before you went there that you wanted to kind of focus on? Um, no, it was just about sort of riding the wave and, and learning. Um, the experience is the biggest thing that you just got to get under your belt and to have a season under my belt now, obviously feel more comfortable and, you know, in the environment and, just learning new tracks and and all that sort of normal stuff that goes on but i suppose stepping up from super two to main game um you know you got so much to learn i mean the races mm. are like 15 laps in super two and most of them are under safety car so when you get into main game and you're doing 250k races and you got to look after tires um it's fuel races and physically as well it's quite a big change so um yeah it was just it was just getting the experience under my belt was the biggest thing and going to all the tracks and and just racing these guys that I've watched on TV for all these years and just to finally get out and do it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So when you, you it's like uh, you're kind of in a unique situation, I guess, to most rookies because you got the first year, yep, sweet, we're in this old Jenna car, get a season under me belt and then it's like all right mate now uh you got this new thing that we're gonna throw at you so i guess like you probably it's maybe more of a unique experience for you uh, more so than shane so like how do you kind of i don't know what was your headspace like knowing that you were going to come and have to drive this completely new generation of car like is it even maybe a good thing because it's like levels out the playing field for you a bit yeah and no, i'm i'm excited by it i think it's good for me but I suppose the best thing in the position that I was in was I was able to come into a car that, 
you know, was so refined and, and Shane and Jamie had developed for so many years. So I come into something that was pretty familiar and to have that year under my belt of gaining experience in a really solid car, you know, week in, week out, I was um, always sort of capable of winning races or podiums. So to be able to gain that experience in such a good car, I think it's probably set me up um, well yeah. for this year. And, and then going into a new car is exciting. I mean, I think all of us drivers are ready for the challenge and we're all sort of back to back to the basics, back to zero and we got to start again. So I think it is good timing for me. I'm glad I got last year under my belt and yeah, um, yeah I'm just excited for this year and the new challenge. Does it change anything in your off-season gears knowing that you've got to like come into a new car or you just prepare the way that you always prepare and kind of take it as it comes kind of deal? No, definitely we put a bit more time in at the workshop to learn like um we still didn't get many test days but had a couple of days in the prototype and then yeah we just got to work closer than ever i guess with sharing data and being open because um you know it's such a new car and so different so yeah i guess there was a bit more prep stuff before the first week to learn um but yeah certainly wasn't wasn't easy the first weekend like the car's still like rules changing and things changing and what we're allowed what we're not allowed in the car so yeah and that still keeps changing yeah so the other thing as well i guess it's like kind of new for 23 is uh you've got richie now as your co-driver um so he's he's obviously pretty solid when it comes to the uh the the longer stuff fellow kiwi as well so are you uh excited excited for that that change team team nz yeah well (laughs) it would have been good to keep (laughs) keep rich uh keep garth sorry but he's uh he made a change which um was was a real shame but good for him uh, but yeah with richie it it's good and bad because if he does a good job and goes awesome he's only going to be there for one year so yeah it's a lot of effort to put in for someone if mm. they're going to be leaving you know because he's good enough to have a full-time drive and he yeah. should have one if he wants one so we're going to do all this prep we're going to show him everything and show him how it all works because we've got two big races Sandown and Bathurst where we need you know that's a massive influence on the championship so yeah he's gonna get all this prep and then hopefully get a full-time drive next year so it's good and bad um but yeah stoked to I guess give a friend an opportunity like he's good enough to good enough to be here and I'm, I'm stoked to have him and now with these new cars with the pedal box moving um and the seat being a bit better for that position um you can have someone shorter drive with you so yeah you, know, okay. you couldn't in the past i couldn't have someone short because they'd be out of the seat with the cushion trying to or the insert trying to get close enough to the pedal so it works quite well now yeah yeah that's cool way eh? and i guess uh he brings his own uh personality media wise to the sport yep. as well <laughs> and to the team couple of uh couple yep. i don't know like-minded fellows <laughs> when it comes to some <laughs> yeah. interviews and press conferences i think yeah we're probably pretty similar in some ways but um yeah i think um the biggest thing is you see him smiling maybe not on the tv stuff but when you're with him talking to him like he's in a awesome frame of mind so he had a yeah. pretty rough couple of years ago and and he's just stoked to be racing again so yeah happy to have him along it, that that'd have to make a difference eh? like just having like i guess the the driving's one thing i mean at, at that level like everyone can drive a car like if you're even in the question or the conversation yeah. for a seat like that but having someone that you like really gel with brings a good vibe like you almost can't put a price on yeah. that eh? yeah but i guess for him he come from europe excuse me, when he came back to Australia and you do no media in Europe. It's probably one of the reasons that I like racing there. You just turn up, race, do an interview if you do well and leave. Like you don't have all this yeah. social media and pressure and stuff. And the fans in Australia are brutal if you do something wrong. And I guess when you're not used to it, like he was reading all the comments and stuff when you mm. know a bad story would come out. Just People just drill you with no thought of the consequences but that's part of our sport i guess as good and bad as it is and it was just draining on him like he got into a couple of bad situations and you know it was the fourth car at at um fpr which is not a good car and then you know just it got worse and worse and spiraled so it's all about where you place yourself and he probably wasn't in the right 
frame of mind for yeah. for that expectation in the back of the field. So when you, you know, now he's in the top team, he's focused and, you know, happy to be there. And I think that makes, it makes a huge difference. Probably like, I mean, all jokes aside too, like having someone like yourself that's got so much experience and dealing with like the good, the bad, like so you've seen every side of the sport at this point. I mean, there's probably something yeah. pretty valuable there um, with, you know, just like your partnership. Like, I'm sure you could probably guide him through that whole deal as well, you know? Yeah. I went through it at Newcastle, the good and the <laughs> yeah. bad, I guess. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's, yeah, like it's, it's harsh in our sport sometimes, but 99% of the, the fans in our sport are, are awesome yeah 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 so when he did the um the test like the test days in the car everything went like pretty yep. pretty sweet uh no we're struggling with his driving at the moment like the throttle response in the cars is very bad so he left foot brakes and then blips the throttle with the left with his with his right foot yeah um, whereas yep. brock and i wear right foot breakers so we heel toe old mm. school way so we can sort of deal with it a bit better because we don't need that sharp response to you know disconnect the gearbox and stuff on the down change we sort of do it with the clutch so i think um matt payne's a left foot breaker i think he's switched to right foot so the the engines aren't very good at the moment for that so um he's not very comfortable with his braking so um yeah hopefully they make the engines better or he'll have to adapt to right footing and so what is it just like a there's there isn't the same throttle response that they used to be because the old cars were they were pretty yeah. touchy right in in a way yeah yeah so they've gone from um independent throttle bodies to a single one so you don't get good response and it's quite a way forward of the engine and also it's um electronic throttle now not a cable so there's a yeah, small right. delay in every step which contributes to a big thing and it's only like a tenth or two or or more when you blip but it's it changes all your timing what you've done all your life yeah. so even yeah. i notice it when i am hill towing it it's um it's not responsive and sometimes i just get i take the easy option and just clutch and hold the throttle and go down all the gears at once because it's just very hard to to sink it and whether it's something we're going to have to live with or it'll get better who knows yeah yeah okay it's yeah almost like a, a shitty sim <laughs> in a way where you've just got yeah, like yeah. that little little bit of de a delay yeah yeah it's it's difficult but i guess we have adapted now and got used to it but you know you got to try and make it better too so i guess like maybe brock will will like just touch on the the gen 3 car and like that whole testing kind of uh phase that you go through like when so when did you first get in the gen 3 car like you got the whole instagram like expectations versus reality <laughs> like what was the <laughs> what, what what was the expectations what was the reality when you when you kind of got in there yeah so our first actual test day was i think the 7th of february but um a couple of weeks prior to that me and shane were out at queensland raceway in the prototype car and and just going through some final testing and that so we got a little bit of an idea pre our first test day and we were still testing and developing stuff for the category and i suppose we walked away from that day knowing that um we've got a pretty big task ahead of us and we need to get some ideas flowing for when we do get out on track so normally we'll only have one test day before the season but we're allowed three days including the official test at sydney so yeah we had our we had our first test on the 7th which was a mad rush getting to i mean it was sort of delayed and delayed and delayed and we finally got both cars ready for this day so um man i spent the first probably three four hours of the day trying to get comfortable in the car and and you know i took my seat insert from last year's car and um yeah we had to muck around we had to go back to sort of the basic seat insert and add paddings here and there and yeah it was nearly half a day nearly not wasted because we we used it to improve but um it's hard in the workshop i mean you feel like you're comfortable but once you actually get out on track yeah yeah I mean, you drive out of pit lane and you know if it's good or not so i suppose we spent a lot of the day doing that and and we did walk away from that first day yeah pretty happy i mean the feeling was good but we knew we had a lot to improve on and and then we went to sydney uh, for the official day and it was a mixed day so it was quite hard to get a read on that um but 
everything went reasonably well. I mean, Richie got some laps in, Jamie got laps in mine. We got to run in the wet and dry conditions. So I felt like every test day, um, we kept improving. And even at the last test day, I mean, we walked, we walked away from it uh, going, oh yeah, we still got a lot to improve. So it's been a, it's been a big process for sure. But um, I felt like we're getting closer and closer. And realistically, we just had to get to Newcastle and, and do the first race and, and figure out what it's like because before then we're all talking rubbish and, and guessing what was going to happen. So to finally get out on track and, and roll out pretty strong was, was good. Yeah, and I guess that's the thing, right, is like, you know, as a driver, you want the best race car that you can possibly have. And it's probably frustrating to feel like that, oh, this took longer than I wanted it to, or you don't have the exact feeling of the car or whatever. But it's like, everyone would be in the in the same boat. Like, it's kind of a, it's just like a gnarly time in the sport right now, you know, like every team is probably feeling that same stress uh but when you go to a test like that on a brand new car as a driver like what are you looking for like what do you want to what do you want to feel like what do you what's like your checklist to i guess like get your head around a new car like that yeah i suppose the first thing is comfort and that's why we spent so much time on it at the track and even after that first test day like we went back and did a, a new seat pour and and changed all the ergonomics to be more comfortable and and we're still you know tweaking that now so that's the biggest one um getting comfortable in the car and and realizing that you know you're gonna have to do a 250k race for the first race of the year and (laughs) if you're not comfortable you're gonna be in a lot of pain so we put a lot of focus onto that but then it's just trying to get a good feeling from the car and i suppose understand what works so we try to run through a program at our test days and, and change stuff and, and learn from it. It was quite difficult to learn from the changes that we were doing though because we were still trying to get comfortable with a new car. So um, yeah, the three test days, for sure we learned stuff. But as I said, we had to get to that first race and figure out where everyone was. I mean, there was, there was an aero test after the last test day before the first round. So it was still changing until we rocked up at Newcastle yeah yeah so what about like ergos of like in terms of just the size of the car because i mean i'm sure you're like you're so used to a car's like an extension of you like you're trying to get as much out of each curb as you can like you and knowing where you can you know essentially like fit a car to make a pass or whatever like was there big differences that stood out now that even like visibility things like that or yeah for sure i mean I probably hit the inside curb at turn five like a hundred <laughs> times on the test day when I probably yeah. never hit it. <laughs> um, just just a lot of reference points were off. Yeah. I mean, visibility has been a big one. And and yeah, it's, I suppose everyone's been a little bit vocal about it and trying to make it better for all of us and um, even just having the mirrors right. I mean, not all the, we couldn't really see out of the mirrors too much at the start. So um, we've got it all a lot better. But yeah, even the ergo stuff, like the seating position so different. Um, the steering wheel isn't wedged this year. It's like straight up and down. So um, even the height of that and, and balancing it between hitting your knees and, and, and being able to see properly. So there's a, there's so many different things that are different. And um, yeah, visibility was a big one. Uh, I think for everything, nothing's perfect yet, but we are getting it better. And yeah, we walked away from the first round with with a you know big list of things that we need to improve but a lot of things also that we've ticked off yeah so shane i guess just throwing that question to you um about just like yeah first impressions and or like i guess let we'll just say like you've come out and you haven't been the biggest fan of the car was it like obvious yep. straight away like you just got and you're like nah this um, ain't it well it's been a, a process like um i think I drove it a few times and then I think at Tassie last April, you know, and there's all these comments that the drivers have, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. You try and say things to help improve the car for the sport, but yeah, it's, um, it's been a bit hard for sure. But I guess when you get the race cars, yeah, then not that great to start with, but they're, they're an evolution, I guess they're going to get better and better and all the things we're struggling with. I just always tell myself if 
I'm struggling with something. Yeah, everyone, everyone is. They've yeah. got the same yeah. parts. So yeah. 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 And I think like, I mean, I know we'll, we'll probably touch a bit later on like the media stuff, but I mean, I think it's definitely, it's cool and it, it is engaging for the fans of the sport and you know to see these rule changes and i mean even if it's not like the i mean it sucks that you guys are the ones <laughs> that have to deal with it on like yeah. on track or whatever but i mean you know the the topic of the car and the the i don't know i feel like it has been probably one of the more engaging things in in recent memory yeah. so it's like i guess overall like it i can see it being a net positive kind of down the track a little bit yeah like, I know, you'd be the same. I'd, I want to get out of a race car and go, oh, that was awesome. So much fun yeah. to drive and you can hustle it. And you just can't do that. Like, the races, you're driving around at 70, 80, 80% saving tyre, waiting for the guy to go off. And sure, yeah. quality you push, but it's awkward. It's um, it's a bit different. You really want to be driving the car properly and, you know, pushing and having good racing because you're trying hard, not because yeah. you're waiting for the other guy to make a mistake or tyres to go off. and. Yeah. yeah well that's that's how i'd want to be anyway yeah, yeah. it's like happy wife happy life <laughs> happy drive <laughs> yeah, <laughs> happy yeah dri- not, like. not many drivers not many drivers jumping out at the moment with big smiles on their faces except maybe the guys who have finally got a good car and been competitive i guess but all the guys who have been around a while are sort of saying the same thing yeah so uh but at least it looks good the cat the livery has come up <laughs> yeah. pretty sick it seems was, to be the biggest positive thing yeah. <laughs> yeah. they so definitely far. tick that box they <laughs> tick the looks good sounds yeah. good um yeah. yeah so the there was a bunch of chat there was a bunch of chat online when when they put out like the blue and silver car and then everyone was like oh that's sick that's what they're running and then they do the reveal of the other car and it's like more of a traditional livery if you guys got to decide, would it have been the blue or would it have been the the normal livery, what you got now? Oh, white, because it's cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Just something sucks. different. <laughs> the cars are hot, yeah. yeah <laughs> full plain white would be good. The test livery looked awesome. I mean, everyone loved it. And I suppose we never get to mix it up too much. Um, but at the same time, we got partners that we got to oblige to and, and, you know, they've got to get out what they need. So everyone's like, oh, you should just run the, the blue and silver. But for our partners, it's probably not the greatest thing ever. But uh, it certainly looked cool. I mean, yeah. I still like our new car now. I think it looks awesome. And yeah. No, they, they, they do look sick. So the other thing as well that you guys, I guess, kind of like did in the off-season uh, period was the, the 12-hour. Um how's the how's the experience of jumping in a gt car like I don't, that thing to me must just it it looks so sick and if i feel like even just doing some sim stuff like driving them they just they seem like a badass car so to drive a triple eight uh gt car at the 12 hour must be pretty cool yeah it's awesome i mean they're cool cars they're so different and it's such an aero dependent car so literally the complete opposite to what we've got in supercars at the moment so uh, i think driving those at bathurst is is probably one of the coolest places for it so uh, it was a challenging weekend for us i mean certainly not the result we wanted to end up with but we both got race experience under our belt before the new season started and and yeah got to work with maxi from europe and and the rest of the crew so uh, it was good fun i mean as you said, they're just cool, tough, fast looking cars. I mean, the speed you go over the top of the mountain is out of control. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool experience. Have you, have you lost the, the wow factor yet of like where your career is at right now, Brock? Cause like 12 months ago when you were <laughs> in the podcast studio last time, you had just done one supercar race and it's like, you know, now you've, you know, you've won races and now you're doing the Red Bull deal, like going over to Austria and like, is it business as usual yet? Or do you still have the like, fuck, this is gnarly, <laughs> like driving GT cars and doing all, doing everything that you're doing? Yeah, I suppose a bit of both. I mean, at the end of the day, I got to remember it was like two and a half years ago, I was still sitting in a classroom, putting pen to paper, doing tests and that. And now I get basically get to travel the world and race cars and race some pretty awesome stuff so um 
the end of the day, I mean, I got to focus on what I got to do, and you know, my my job now is to race cars, and I'm so privileged to do that. But every once in a while, you got to pinch yourself and and realize, you know, how lucky I am to be where I am at this point um, in my life, and just the stuff that I've experienced. You know, as you said, in the last twelve months is is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, it's exciting. I'm just excited for what's to come in the future. Try not to look back at the moment hopefully in 20 or 30 years i'll look back on it and realize uh all the cool stuff i got to do what about you shane like do, you're sitting across from brock as like the complete yeah, opposite old. <laughs> yeah like complete opposite end of the spectrum yeah. like can you do you remember when you were like in the exact same kind of moment in time as what brock is and like can you see it in him still yeah, I think he's certainly a lot older than I was at that age, I guess. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I was um, half a year out of school as well when I got the, the call to come to Australia and race and straight into supercars. So yeah, sort of pretty similar in our, um, our starts, but also I didn't win a race in my first year either. It took me a couple of years, but um, yeah, it's good. It's good. And also the rawness is good as well. Like um, you're always having fresh ideas and then even the way he drives sometimes at a track where i've been going to for 10 or 15 years almost mm. now um jamie and i would be so similar and last year brock would come in and yeah i would be faster at you know most of the lap and then one corner he'd be crazy fast doing something different that i'm like oh never thought of to do it that way just when you you don't know about it like there was so many things i learned still last year off him which was pretty cool yeah it, it, it's a cool dynamic and i love seeing that in sport is when you've got yep. two teammates that you know you guys have a good relationship but it's it's like a you're in such different places in your in your career you know and I'm, it's like i'm sure you could see yep. in brock the the froth level on the stoke and i mean maybe there's so yep. much stuff that you take for granted now because you know you've just kind of like been there and and done it all so like i can see it being a pretty cool balance within the team yeah it has been awesome and then and on track as well it's gonna get better and better like all the tracks that were new to you last year are gonna be you know he's gonna be even quicker like I think Tazzy was the first third round last year or something and he's out qualifying me at his first time there so it was um you know this year it's going to be good we'll especially this year as well we need to push each other and develop this car together before we try and beat everyone else so to have that year last year before the new cars I think it's going to be a huge help to us this year yeah it probably is maybe more of an important year than ever to be like a team as such because obviously motorsports is yep. like it's just you driving the car but you know the car can the car that's underneath you is it's like it's so much better to have two people working together on one car you know yep. like it's probably more critical than ever to have that good vibe within the team yeah and i think this year's car is more of a engineer's car that setup car than a driver's car than last mm. year so it's even more important to work together and make sure we get the setup right and develop the car right to be fast because it feels like you're so limited to what the car does that you need to um we need to have the thing right every time and you know we don't have the roll bars as systems as much to tune it inside the car so we've got to be sharp with our feedback and make sure we try all all areas of of setup during practice and try and be be on it yeah, yeah. i mean it's pretty cool anyway at newcastle you got two cars we were sort of the only team that had two cars in the mix battling for the win and mm. i think we we're third and fourth and ended up first and second off strategy so it certainly helps when you got two cars in the mix and i probably wasn't there for him last year to do these strategy calls <laughs> but um it was yep. cool cool experience to see how how as a team we work together to both better our results going to add to that one shane you look like you're about to jump in <laughs> Yeah, no, I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, but it's good. Like we had the, all the talk of pre-race was all the stacking because we only have the one pit boom um, in, in, in the races. So if, if a yellow came out, whoever's the front car gets priority and the second car gets stuffed. So, and, but looking at it after, um, it's a good problem to have. Like it means you're both up front, both pushing and you strategize around that and you go off strategy to try and suck other people in. But really you're just working around a problem but it's um to me 
yeah, it's awkward at the time because you're racing. You want to be the first car, so you get pit priority. But it's a good problem to have because you, you know, you can you can split the strategy and and do it other ways. You know. Yeah. So before we fully dive into Newcastle, uh, your thoughts on the the uh, GT car at the twelve hour must have been nice. Must have been a a nice little change yeah. to, to oh, get in it- there and hook in. It was a bit different to the sprint car that I raced the week before. But, um, <laughs> whenever you drive a GT car, they're unreal. Like the downforce, the braking, and um, just the grip that they have. Like the tyre is awesome. Um, I personally struggled myself for whatever reason. But yeah, like that weekend's fun. Um, good way to start the year and a long race as well. So you get so many um, so many miles. So it's a good um, good race weekend. It's just good, good to get seat time before we you know it was a week before we started testing so yeah it worked out really well do you have to get your eye into the speed again it's like you, you're doing sprint cars and that's fast but i'm sure it's so different but like bathurst obviously yeah. is such a quick track does it take a little bit to like really get your eye back into into the speed that you're doing yeah yeah it certainly does like if i don't drive something um for three or four weeks like i jump in a car again and it just feels like you're going um so much faster like it takes your brain a little bit to catch up so even as much simulator as you play or trying to do other training like driving a car there's no no substitute for it so then uh and then you get to race old uh danny rick in the rb7 obviously he's a moto (laughs) dude too so throw some elbows in there Yeah, it was pretty epic, like just racing around with the car. You could see how fast it was, but when we were play racing, you don't have good vision out of the the Gen 3 as it is, but that car's so low. So he was doing play racing around me. Obviously, I was just driving as quick as I could, but I couldn't see him at all. So I probably almost run him over a couple of times. <laughs> but when that thing went flat out down the straight, it was unbelievable how fast it was. It was so cool, yeah. It must have been a cool experience to be on that track. Like you're on Bathurst with the Red Bull F1 yep. car and it's like getting to do your thing. It it must feel like you're just next to a fighter jet with wheels. Yeah. Well, more the experience I took in was um, on the cool down lap. Like everyone was there because it was just after quali and I was looking at the crowd and everyone there had their phones out. Everyone was just focused on us just play racing and going side by side and probably shouldn't have been watching the crowd but um it was it was epic like it was such a cool experience and to be chosen to do it like um yeah it was so much fun that's awesome man did you uh did you try and get in the seat like did you try and fit in and, and oh, steal it for a I lap i wouldn't have fit in that thing i wouldn't get my shoulders in, in the <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if I could, yeah. I'd try. Yeah. Dude, I mean that that would be a crazy experience. I know J Dub's got to do it, but to yeah, I'd love I'd love to see an SVG Bathurst lap in an F one car. I'm, I'm gonna put that on my bucket list. Maybe maybe Red Bull yeah. can do like a two up car and they can just take the the front <laughs> the front seat out. Yeah. It would have been good to see what it could do flat out and have a go. Like Yeah. It it was like I could he gave it a few goes on the straight and like how fast it was like i was flat out and he left me for dead like it's amazing how quick they accelerate it was really cool to see because obviously you see on an f1 weekend that they're 30 40 seconds a lap quicker at melbourne grand prix but to see it that's on so track, much like, time dude yeah, yeah it's crazy it's eye-opening yeah and that's just one lap you know like you think yeah, about how how much that time like adds up over but um yeah so i guess we'll we'll, we'll go into into newcastle uh big weekend there was a lot going on uh both before <laughs> and after it um but yeah i mean going into the weekend obviously uh pretty cool regardless of any of the results and whatever's to come of that you guys were able to work your way to the front and basically go one two um on the racetrack in a brand new car like that's got to be a pretty solid feeling to you know after everything that went in off season wise to to get there and do that so i guess just general thoughts from both of you yeah like triple eight seems to have this amazing record i don't know what the number is but out of like the last 20 years they've won the first race of the year 18 times or something silly i don't know what the fact is but um it's ridiculous but 
it all comes down to the preparation like yeah how yeah. much effort everyone put in like everyone was wrecked when they turned up but the effort they put in to prepare two race cars for us and after our testing go through the issues we had what we wanted as drivers try and make the car better like what our team does is amazing and it's so cool to be a part of and see it all happen and yeah when we get to newcastle like we ran through our practice program tried stuff and we just stayed in our small sort of setup window we we um got it pretty good you know turning up like that like it's amazing for a new car how much we weren't searching it was really cool and then yeah um, qualifying we missed it a bit both days but in the races our cars were jets and really that track's hard to pass so you had to get clean air and what our team did both days to put us in clean air and strategize around us um to get up front was was pretty impressive and um yeah that feeling even though it's been taken away so far i guess um the post race one two first race of the year new cars like massive change it was um pretty cool moment to be proud of to be part of yeah proud of it brock your thoughts yeah just echo what shane said i mean the work that the team put in and and it's all the teams just to get to newcastle i mean every time i'd go into the workshop i'd nearly feel bad because i'd be talking to the boys <laughs> and it was it was like yeah. eight weeks and they'd had one day off or something ridiculous like like just working seven days a week massive hours you know having dinner at workshop and and um to get there and to win like one two in the first race i mean it was it was unreal and i think the team probably realized how special that was at the time and and all the effort that went into to get that result and it was yeah it was so special for us and where you know we're the lucky guys that get to stand up on the podium but to have jeremy up there as well and and the whole team there was was very special so uh, it was a uh, yeah it was good way good way to start the year i mean forgetting all the other stuff we crossed the line one two and and that's that's the result on the track so um yeah it was it was a cool way to start the year yeah because i i guess like my take on that whole deal from i guess being around race teams and mechanics and the whole like traveling with series is i think sometimes people forget that it's humans that are at the team like i think especially when it's yeah. like triple eight or some of the bigger teams you just people they're like oh they got the most money oh they got this they got that and it's like yeah they've also got dogs they've also got kids they've also got yeah. wives you know it's it's humans that make the shit happen at the end of the day and it's like you can have all the money in the world you can have all the sponsors in the world you can have you can have all that but if you don't have people that are willing to go to the lengths that you know the triple eight team are willing to go to like you just can't do what you guys did and and it's not like yeah it's just the fact that they've got kids at home and wives at home and dogs and hobbies and there's so much that these guys have to and girls have to give up in their life to put you guys on that track you know i think sometimes people maybe forget that when they kind of just talk about the sport in general but it's real people that make that shit happen for you guys yeah and you could see it all the way up and down pit lane like there was so many body panels and stuff that was just getting rushed and made and sent out to all the teams so late like the whole whole paddock had to put so much effort in and uh hopefully it's you know hopefully it doesn't burn too many people out like we got some pretty exciting times coming up but um yeah it's a big long year and already seeing people tired is tough so yeah hopefully it sort of settles down a bit the mid-year especially is pretty spread out and um yeah it can hopefully cruise on a bit for the guys but you're right like it's it's um it's a huge commitment in that off season by so many people with their families and stuff to um spend so much time away and just work on race cars like yeah it's um huge effort no i think it's i think it's cool the way that you guys i guess like understand that as races too you know like it, it could be easy to just kind of rock up jump in the car do your victory someone <laughs> and get go yeah. and cash your bonus check well, that, you know but well, that's that it's what like brock said like we're the two guys on the podium but it it needs to be the whole team like yeah. it just we're unfortunately the guys who get singled out for our efforts like yeah like we're just driving two good cars we're the lucky guys yeah. but yeah the whole team's got us up there 
Yeah, no, it's awesome. So Newcastle uh, to be the first round. Um, so they had that. It was a couple of years ago, and then COVID comes along, um, yep. and then they they obviously can't kind of commit to to building that circuit. But from what I remember, uh, Newcastle was a bit of a hit the first year that it was there. I love Newcastle. I think it's a dope dope city. Um, cool vibe, cr- cool beaches, cool people. Um, I guess how was that event and was it cool to be back there after a couple of years off? Yeah, definitely. Like I think it was 2019 was the last time there yeah. and yeah, it's it's a cool track. Like it's probably one of the best street tracks to drive. It's hard to race because it's hard to pass but when you're racing and pushing there in qualifying and stuff, it's really cool to drive. It's awesome, awesome track and um, yeah, along the beachfront and stuff we stay inside the track precinct so can walk to the track in the mornings or walk to the pits in the mornings and yeah it's just a really cool event and um i think it's i think it's a good place to open up the season and hopefully yeah. i think it's on its last year of its contract so hopefully it gets extended um but yeah i think it was a i think it's a cool cool event anything that stands out from that that track for you brock obviously just i guess street street circuits in general are, are kind of hard to pass but fun to drive like fun to kind of just like be at that event in general yeah for me it was cool it's my first time in a supercar there so as shane said it's such a cool track to drive around racing's quite difficult but i suppose you got the you know the tight twisty stuff like the normal street tracks but to then have the the big fast left down into the you know the second last corner so bumpy on a street track i mean you don't normally get that feeling from a street track so to be there but you f- you forget when you go to these tracks like you're driving around on a warm-up lap or an in-lap and the fence is just filled with people i mean yeah it's 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 a really cool feeling to see that and and to have the track on the beach i mean every morning i'd go down and have a swim in the beach like you just forget how lucky you are to to have a track in such a cool place so it was awesome i mean i hope it does stay i mean the concerts sounded pretty cool at night time and we would be in debrief and there'd be music pumping but um it seemed like a cool event i mean i hope they i hope they keep it going um yeah the racing's hard to pass but i suppose most street tracks quite are it's more just the thrill of of being on a street track yeah yeah the uh i think it, it must be cool to start a i guess like really start a season off with a bang too you know like the, i mean there's some tracks on the calendar that just the, you don't have the same vibe or the, the same kind yeah. of energy so it seems like at least for my uneducated perspective it seems like you should really start yeah. the year off with a party you know yeah like last year we started at eastern creek so i think yeah. this one was a lot yeah. better yeah. i suppose the thing is we yeah. got to make sure you know just like yourself that when you watch the race for the first one of the year it gets you hooked you yeah, know what i mean yeah. it's not just rocking up and racing at any track it's it's got to be a bang for the spectacle i suppose more than it does for the drivers i mean it's such a cool place to start the year as drivers but you need to get everyone engaged right at yeah. the start of the year and i suppose you're only going to do that at a couple of big events and newcastle certainly one of them yeah so then uh obviously we get we get through the race uh weekend Giz, this is where I guess you can, you enter the chat or leave the chat as such. Um, yeah. I, guess, I guess what was the uh, you know my feelings on this. I sent you a message after after the race, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're in a friendly space when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, I guess yeah. like what was the uh, yeah what was the vibe at the at the end of it? And I, I don't know, like what headspace were you in? Obviously, like then you you put up a, a social post but your take on the whole weekend and and how it all kind of went down yeah yeah i guess i summed up a lot of it in that post but um it was it was a difficult one weekend obviously because i had my thoughts with the cars and you know they all got up and briefing and said you know be positive talk about the car in a positive way and i'm not going to lie to people if i don't like it i want to be honest about it so i'd rather say nothing and um i struggled on the test day with heat and um on the friday as well at newcastle it was so hot in the cars it was crazy and then you know they let us have some things but we saw people still falling out of the cars on saturday and really hurt feet and people getting put on drips and stuff like that and we haven't seen that for a long time so not a really good start but um then of course 
we had the DQ and stuff like that. So, yeah, I was pretty... Um, I entered Sunday pretty... An- or maybe not angry is not the right word, but I was just determined to go out there and do my best and just kill everyone and or smoke everyone, um, which we <laughs> did. You know, in the, in, the, in the race, it was epic. Like, what the strategy we ran, the pace we had, and, and how we won it was really cool. But, um, yeah, the post-race stuff, I definitely... Um, definitely could have been better you know like i had i knew exactly what i was going to say and when i watch it back now like you know jess yates i i've rung and spoke to her since but you know she's really awesome person for our sport and she asked quite a good question and i didn't even listen to it you know i just knew what i was going to say and thank the team and you know did all our talking on the track so you know she she did a really good job i just you know knew what i was going to say and i just um i just left it at that and then repeated it at the press conference but um, you know, so I know that I didn't do a good job with the media stuff and and I need to be better for sure. But um yeah, like what happened after with Scaife and stuff, like, you know, with Garth and Jess they commented on it as they saw it, which is fine. But yeah, with Scaife he just went full ham, full everything and like he knows exactly what we're going through as drivers and he's been part of like I think he is the main guy of Gen Three and all the comments we've been talking about the car have, have gone to him and he's sort of orchestrated it all so for him to say that stuff and talk about it you know the way he did publicly with, with he hasn't really said much to me about it or nothing since either it's like shit it wasn't real nice you know and he's he knows exactly what's going on he knows exactly what the drivers are saying about the car so felt like he was sort of using me as a as a scapegoat about it so yeah 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 it's pretty pretty average but um you know I, I knew i needed to be better with the the media stuff as i say but um yeah what he did is was a bit too much for me yeah yeah and i think i mean i guess my my take on it for for whatever it's worth is i i think that i mean yeah. i guess what i do with the the podcast probably not not as much in supercars but with supercross and like i kind of have my opinions on the media side and the like I'm in the job of telling stories and and I guess like trying to dig for storylines and because I personally believe that that's what makes the sport that's what gives fans something to follow and and I think that a way that a sport grows and thrives is when people want to watch the race on Sunday but then supercars isn't out of their mind on Monday and it's not out of their mind on Tuesday or Wednesday or you know like people live in the sport I think that's when you get you know the most fans I think that's when you get the most fans coming to races that's when you get the most sponsors that's when you get like this healthy ecosystem and it is kind of like built off the fans coming to the races but then that has to be there has to be something for fans to like care about or believe in or you know like be invested in so I think I guess like my perspective on it in terms of I guess supercar saying like oh be positive be that it's like well be real like I think that we should you know people should have the perspective that that maybe the cars aren't perfect and that's cool that's something to follow for the rest of the year like let's root for these things to get better and let's learn where they're not the best right now like what's the point of keeping these secrets and and then I think in terms of I guess just this weekend or the, the past weekend I'm sure that you're not feeling frustration from one weekend. And I think that that's probably where some of the comments were really directed at like what you did on one Sunday for 20 minutes of your life where it's like this shit's probably been brewing up inside for a lot longer than that one 20 minutes, you know? So it's like, I guess people come across like you look bad or you made this mistake over a 20 minute period. But in reality, I mean, that's, it's probably been building a lot longer than that, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's why the, his comments, like he knows what's been happening in the past few months, but you can read and see through everyone's PR talk. Like it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Reynolds, Reynolds not being able to say what he says. Like he's one of the most outspoken people and says what he thinks. Like he keeps so many, he's been quite quiet, you know? And, and then I read all like the test days and stuff. Uh, there's a couple of drivers I know like completely trashing or well, not trashing the car that's the wrong word but describing the car and Being then all honest. the PR comes out about yeah but then all the PR comes out about how great it is and what it's going to be and it's like well you you know you're just 
seeing people scared to say what you think, whether it's at risk, they won't, don't want to get clickbaited or made to look negative and stuff. And yeah, it's a weird vibe in our sport at the moment. You feel like you, you feel like you really got to toe the line for the sport and say the right thing. But yeah, like I, I love supercars. That's what I grew up watching yeah. V8 supercars and all I ever wanted to be and still do as a V8 supercar driver. So I want to, I want it to be awesome. I want this car to succeed. And I think I want the, you know, and I do want the racing to be good and everyone to jump out of the car enjoying it. And that's what I feel like I've been trying to guide the car and talk about my comments in that way. But yeah, I don't know. It felt like every time I spoke, you know, their eyes would light up. Oh, he doesn't like the car. He's struggling with it. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm, you know, shows I can still drive it. Okay. It just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a weird it's weird it's a weird vibe and weird time but i really want it to i really want it to get better i'm not a media person i don't know how to fix it or do anything but yeah i guess just got to keep my head down and try my best and hope it turns around i i I guess from my perspective and like being in the media game uh i just i don't understand why there's a need to to sugarcoat a new car it's just like what's the problem with everyone being like oh yeah we've got like we've got this new car and it's day yeah. one and it's just not as good as it's going to be like who does that hurt yeah Do the, does that mean that yeah, the, like fans the car's are- still the car's brand new it's gonna get better like you you can say that like there's parts coming yeah. there's changes coming and you're never gonna go to a newcastle track like that and it to be perfect round one like yeah, everyone knows that so you should be open about it this is what we're working on this is what people are struggling with and this is what we need to do to get better and this is our plan for it but it all seems to be a bit different yeah yeah and i think that you know like i just don't see how it's this damaging storyline that is everyone wants to stay away from because then you look on the flip side of it the storyline for this whole deal like since the race has just been like directed towards you and it's like yeah uh, and it's Subject still around change, the car yeah. but it's still around the cars sucking in that sense so it's like they haven't avoided yeah. the topic of the car not being great by the way that it's gone anyway so it's like i just feel like you can keep you know your previous champion as not a villain of the sport by just acknowledging what needs to be acknowledged and you know it's, it's the my, I guess my point is like the topic's the same regardless, but it's just making you seem like a person that you're not essentially. And I think that yeah. it's there's that's something. Why I feel like it. Oh, sorry. That's why I Go felt ahead. like the scapegoat kind of. But as I say, like the car, the fundamentals of the car are awesome. It looks good. It's aggressive, and and it should drive good. You can see it moving around. Like it won't take much to to tune it up. I think like when you see the way the cars hop over the curbs, that they, they flame now. Like they look like everything's there it probably won't need much to to be better but i don't know yeah don't brock it. how what, what what was it like for you to kind of be on the i guess like the right hand side of this whole deal and and watch it go down yeah i mean it sucks first of all to to see shane sort of get thrown through everything that happened over the weekend but i mean the biggest you know, thing that you look out of it. I mean, the two biggest things that come out of the weekend was uh, we got disqualified on Saturday and that Shane got sort of beaten up on Sunday and the racing was sort of forgotten about. Yeah. So to go through a a weekend with such big change and to see the two biggest headlines are completely irrelevant to the actual racing was was a bit of a shame. But, um, man, I'll stick up for this guy for whatever whatever happens, you know what I mean? And, And to see... See how was, some of the stuff that was said was, is this not true? And, you know, they go on about not being a good ambassador for the sport. I mean, we all see what he does behind the scenes and even just talking to you now, like when when you can let Shane talk about what he wants to talk about and, and be open about it, I mean, he's got the best ideas in the sport and everything like that. And there's a new drivers group that we all get in amongst and, and put ideas forward and he's the man leading the charge and... And there's a few other guys involved in that, but he's, you know, doing so much he can to improve the sport and, and, you know, he's the champion for a reason and people might not see it on the TV, but he's been a great ambassador for it. And yeah, it's, it sucks to see 
what happened and get beaten up so much because yeah, it's not what he deserves and, and it's not what the sport deserves either. So that's a tough one. I just hope the further we go on, we can actually focus on the racing and that's the headline. Man, yeah. We're all we're all so worried about at the moment, just getting clickbaited stories. I mean, every time we talk, you gotta be so careful with what you're saying and you have to think about everything. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. really tough. Can't and say it. I f- mm. I feel like I'm always really open with the media and I'm I'm actually always happy to talk to them. Like I never have a problem whatsoever. But this year, as Shane said, I gotta think so much about how I'm gonna answer the question and it's a it's a shame. I just wanna be open with everyone and and like we are with you, we're just open and we can talk about what we want, but I'm sure there'll be parts of this podcast that get clickbaited and, <laughs> and that's a new headline and yeah. they might not listen to the next 30 minutes of it. So yeah. uh, it's difficult. Um, we got to really think about what we're talking about and and we always want to be as open as we can so the fans understand what we're going through. So um, look, at the end of the day, as Shane said, we want the racing to be the forefront. We want our talking to be done on the track and and we want the sport to grow. And I think you know, the racing has got to be the forefront of that. I think the the frustrating thing for me is that like I make a living out of talking to athletes and like athletes want to come on my show and like granted, you know, we're not fully in the supercar world in terms of like, that's not our area of expertise, but like we've got the biggest guys in the sport of supercross and, you know, like F1 and MotoGP and it's like, the guys want to come on because there isn't that clickbaity sort of stuff. Like it's, I'm, I'm not out for a story. I don't want to like give myself a rap here, but it's like uh, the point I'm trying to make is that when guys want to be there, you get amazing stories because you're amazing people. Like what you guys do is fucking psycho. Like you, you've got to this <laughs> super high level in your craft and you're running on like a razor's edge and there's these crazy team dynamics and the, you're the veteran, you're the rookie. Like there's so much that's at play. There's like real stories here and there's really cool stuff to talk about. And it just seems like, especially in V8 supercars, there's such like a us versus them mentality of the drivers versus the media. And it's like, it just seems pointless. Like, does it really need to be there? And does it get the best out of you guys? And like, even Shane to the point where like, we're friends and you haven't done Gypsy Tales because you're worried about not what I'm going to say, I'm sure, but about what comes out of it as a result of it, you know? And it's like, that to me just doesn't it doesn't seem fair for the drivers but it also seems like the sport's just gonna lose out in general it just seems like there needs to be well i mean it doesn't need to be anything they can keep doing whatever they want but it's like if there was a bit of a shift to a different style of reporting or a different style of journal journalism it just seems like you guys could be way more yourself even Chaz, you know like Chaz is a dude with a crazy cool personality and like even he's just acting in a sense, you know, like doing what, what he does with his um, like post-race interviews and stuff. So it's like, I don't know, it just seems like there's a, there's a bit of a loss that goes on with the way that the sport gets reported on. And it just, there's examples of other places where it isn't like that. And it just seems like a bit of a shame in supercars. And then, and then I think that it extends onto the fans because the fans are reading what's going on in the media. So there's like, there is a follow on effect and it kind of just creates like this vicious cycle, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like our, our media seems to be always focusing on the bad points. And then as a driver, you start talking about it more and focusing on it more too. It's hard, but like I, I follow the other sports and supercross NASCAR, f1 not so much the media side but when you read the nascar stories or the supercross stories they're just always more upbeat and focusing on the good stuff and someone's had a good result that gets pumped up they got new parts on their bike there's always different things and it always seems so much more positive but everyone's so happy to talk about it and hasn't been like it here always you know it's only the last few years it's really changed um you know or or I've started to do more media maybe here and, and noticed it since I've been at the Red Bull team. But yeah, the sports I follow, it definitely is a different way of, like the articles are certainly a lot more positive, I guess, and not as much pointing, finger pointing and yeah, trying to drag stuff down. Yeah. And then you see it as well in the, 
in the comments like i don't even try and read the supercar comments anymore but when you do it's just a dumpster fire but yeah. the, you know you read nascar and any other supercross like the positivity on the social media is awesome and yeah the negativity might get you a few more clicks but it eventually drags everything down instead of hyping it up so it yeah. might get you that you know response that you might want from that but it doesn't consistently build the sport yeah 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 and i think for from another side of it too though like uh you know you 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 see the effect that it had on you right so the stories have been about you and it's been about like svg this svg that but then yeah you got brock that's sitting right there who's just starting his career and who's seeing mentor and a friend go through this and then it it's got to change the way that he acts and then the next person that comes along and then i think that you know like from brock's response to the whole thing it's like he's got your back and it, it sort of makes you guys tighter which i that's that's a good thing in my opinion that it kind of bring brings you guys together but it sort of just makes everything a little bit more insular so anyway i guess i've said yep. said my piece on it i think that yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think that i think you not saying something at a press conference is completely within your right as an athlete you know and there's probably people that'd be pissed off about that but i think saying nothing can say a lot you know so yeah. and again it's it did a, in the end in the <laughs> in the short term it probably pissed a few people off and then I felt bad, you know, the fans want to know as well, but then I couldn't, you can't really express the way you wanted. So I think most people understand it now, why I was that way and the messages I've got from friends and other drivers and even a lot of media people, I've never heard from so many media people in my life. Like it's, um, you know, even they're getting told what to say and to be more positive in their stories and not to write things. Like it's a, it's, it's a bit weird, but um, yeah, like the support I've got since the weekend's been been great so uh, i can't wait to get to the next one and hopefully it's um hopefully it's a bit better and we just go racing so did it sour the mood on the red bull yacht at the uh at the end of the race did you just get to go on to that bad boy uh, yeah i was pretty quiet <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was pretty down you know it's a weird i've never won a race and felt so bad so um, <laughs> yeah it was a weird weird vibe but still everyone but everyone was just wrecked so it was still yeah it was still good to get everyone on there and celebrated a bit but um yeah it was i think everyone just was glad it was over and they could get a couple of days off yeah yeah um, um yeah i bet everyone was glad that there was a yacht there though it's probably better than just going like yeah. straight into like tassie <laughs> airport or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so uh oz gp is uh is coming up coming up next have you guys been watching the the f1 at all this year the first couple of races you've been following it yeah, a little yep. bit. I suppose we keep an eye on it. Um, just sucks with the times that they're on. So we've got to watch it the next day. But oh, it's cool to see Red Bull doing so well and the Astons are in it. But um, yeah, it's always a cool experience going to the F1. Not only we get to race, but to see those cars in person. So uh, looking forward to it. Have you got any yeah, like... They're, all, they're awesome. Any Oz GP memories that stick out? Um... It always used to be more fun when it was a non-championship race, like because you know, <laughs> yeah. it would be late at not later in in the afternoons and low stress. You'd rock up to the track at two o'clock and you know go for lunch in Melbourne during the day and maybe at night too. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was always so fun that weekend. But um, oh, there's nowhere to yeah, go now in now Melbourne, full, man. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a full race weekend, so it's, it's proper serious and you're there to do a job. But um, yeah, it's always, right, well, always let's a good put event. that. Let's put that on the uh, on the two change, and maybe maybe the drivers association that can be uh, number one. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no more no more Melbourne as a championship, and we need Revolver as a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> so, what what do you think? Uh, the I guess like, do you have any predictions for how the cars will go around that circuit? Like, is it? I guess would it be similar in any ways to Newcastle you think or is it a completely different kind of setup coming into that race you reckon no it's completely different yeah. it's a high grip surface and it's completely flat so we haven't really been on a good surface on a fast open track and then they've got hard tires which is the only time of year we're running hards and yeah. the super soft so the speed discrepancy is going to be massive but um, last year when we ran the softs they were blistering and falling apart so now we're on a super soft 
it's going to be very interesting <laughs> with the tires to see if they don't fall apart so yeah i think that's going to be going to be it but hopefully with the different tires the racing will be crazy and we'll um forget all the non-passing of newcastle and be celebrating this one hopefully it goes off and uh big dog you uh you keen for any any uh well i guess what part of melbourne are you keen for am i big dog yeah if, yeah you're the big dog <laughs> yeah. now mate. <laughs> jeez. Jeez, far yeah. out um no, it was cool. I mean, last year we got to do the thing with Sergio and he got to drive one of our supercars, which was pretty cool. But the, probably one of the coolest things about it for me would just be getting to catch up with Jack and and finally watch him race in F2 and then yeah. finally make Tommy Smith in F3. So that's going to be sick, man. I'm just keen as to catch up with him and see him. You know, it'll be the first time I get to see Jack race in a car in person. So looking forward to it. I mean... It's hard when you get there. Obviously, you just got to focus on what you know what we've got to do. But I mean, on Friday and our schedule's so spread out down there. Obviously, we're a support category, so um, we'll be able to spend a bit of time with those guys. And yeah, it's a bit cool to hang out with them. It uh, it was sick to see Jack get on the podium uh, on the weekend. That was a pretty solid solid drive from from him. Yeah, and no, it was good. So yeah, I've been been talking to him a bit. He's he's keen. I think he's keen as to get back home and. He's actually driving a supercar next week, so even though it's not with us, it's with another team. But um, I've been talking a bit about that, so it'll be cool. I'm sure we'll have a great time in that. Yeah, that'll be sick. So, uh, any, I guess, any other plans for the year? Obviously, twelve race season. Um, outside of, all right, what what track do you think are you most excited for? Actually, before we go into that, Bathurst, probably. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> this is the probably, simple answer like yeah easy question. we don't have new zealand anymore which sucks so bathurst is probably the biggest race now yeah i suppose yeah. it's gonna be interesting to see what the car's like there i mean it's it's sort of our biggest race the pinnacle and it's the most hectic track so it's gonna be cool to see what they're like and so as far as the year goes have you got any other is there anything in between like the 12 race it, calendar that you're going to try and squeeze in this year that, that's going to be pretty cool yeah so um i'm racing in the gt asian championship with prince jeffrey so sick still with triple eight and then i'll do a couple of couple of the oz rounds as well so i think my season will probably be 19 or 20 races by the end of the year so it's pretty busy next couple of months i mean over to thailand a couple of times before perth and then before tassie and then yeah, I mean, he gets raced at Suzuka, um, Mateki, That'd be sick. and Sepang at the end of the year. So I'm keen as it's gonna be, gonna be cool. And like, I'm looking at my calendar for the next couple of months, and I'll be home like two weekends. So it's pretty exciting to be traveling so much and getting to do what I love all around the world now. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, getting interviewed by the King Wally Lewis this week, apparently. Oh yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that happened yes yesterday. So oh, you already. I did mean, it? growing up as a yeah, I've already done it. Yeah, oh, so sick. Um, I mean, growing up as a you know an NRL fan and a very proud Queenslander to to meet Wally. I mean, I never got to watch him play or anything like that, but certainly hear a lot of stories and yeah, to meet him um, was was pretty cool. And we took him for a couple of laps around Norwell, and and he drove a bit, and I was in the passenger <laughs> seat. So. I'm glad to be sitting here in one piece, but um, yeah, man, that's that's cool. Like being a being a Queenslander, um, he, he's right up there. So pretty cool experience. Well, I mean, you could have been a front rower for Queensland too. I mean, big dog, look at the mate, size. Look at the size, of me, mate. <laughs> massive. I used to used to play front row back in the day, but um, <laughs> did you really? That's why I stopped rugby quite a long time ago. <laughs> did you actually play front row? Very good. Yeah, I was like in the forwards. <laughs> no and way. <laughs> you wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> well, I suppose I was a little bit bigger when I was a bit younger, but um, I think I probably stopped in year seven and started playing volleyball because I knew I wouldn't get injured. But man, every time they get it get kicked off and they'd start running at me, I'd <laughs> I'd turn around and run the other way. So <laughs> oh, I was just <laughs> hoping, not a just forward. hoping that you had that little crazy gear, you know, like one of those like Volco kind of dudes, just like the shortest front rower in no, the world, no. just an absolute no, psycho. <laughs> Yeah, I'd prefer to play like a number seven, but I'm not that fast or or that uh, fit either. So anyway, 
So Shane, you've uh, got the new pooch. So is your year just going to consist of watching <laughs> Caesar Milan videos? <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> no, he's all right. Got him a couple of weeks ago. Cool little dog. Um, yeah, I don't think he's that dog. little, is he? Yeah, he's, <laughs> no, he's six months old and forty kilos. So it's pretty That's big, wild. dude. <laughs> but um, as big as bro. Yeah, he's been. <laughs> yeah, he is. yeah, he could be a front row of the dog. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been been cool. Um, yeah, always growing up with dogs and cats. So, got a cat. He's over in New Zealand, but now got a dog too. So, it's good fun. And uh, have you got any other extracurricular activities that you've uh, booked in for the in between? Or yep. So hopefully doing. I'll do four rallies in New Zealand, I think, and then Sick. hopefully a couple in the Aussie Championship later in the year, um, and then Speedway again too. So, I think that starts November. I think I'll start racing that. Um, but yeah, just just like the new challenges and something different, like rally is is so addictive. It's awesome sport and completely different sharing a car with someone and working together with your co-driver. Like it's really cool and um, yeah, quite quite different. So want to try to do more of that and, and get better. So you're going to have RD build like a, uh, a, a sprint car for you, you reckon? We're going to have like a triple, triple eight sprint car? <laughs> Oh, no. I go racing for fun. He's too serious for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, boys, uh, thanks so much for, for doing the uh, the review. I've enjoyed it. It's uh, it's good to have you in the studio, SVG, mate. I've been wanting you in here for a while. So even yeah, though we had to force yeah. you to come, I'm glad, I'm glad you're in here. <laughs> yeah, one day I'll do it, mate. Maybe when I retire. Yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's been awesome and uh, I'm stoked for both of you boys. Uh, I reckon it, it's going to be a good year. It's good to see you um, yeah, in good spirits and, uh, and, and working hard together. It's uh, definitely fun for me to watch the way that you guys go about your racing together. So thanks again for coming and doing it. Cool, man. Thanks, good man. Thanks you. for having us. See you in a few months. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125 Gypsy Gang.